Well, hello everyone. The uh, Gospel for the 16th Sunday of the year is what we want to think about today. And um, just before I do, to say that the uh, this time last week we were thinking very much about our provincial chapter. Anyway, just to say that it's had a very good outcome uh, and we'll say more about that. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that after my reflection. And there is a, an extended piece in our newsletter just to say what, what has happened. Um, and I encourage you to read that, but it, it's, it's positive. And we feel that we were blessed very much in the week. So thank you very much for your prayers, which were clearly uh, God's presence was, was very strongly felt. So the apostles rejoined Jesus. You remember last week the, the apostles were sent out and uh, they were told to, to go with uh, minimum baggage and um, to be very concentrated on what they were doing. Uh, really quite a strict regime was, 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 uh, what was what was asked of them. And now today we have them coming back after their mission and uh, I think the first line or two is really really rather lovely. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Now just just imagine that just imagine them our Lord seated beneath a great acacia tree and watching, watching them all coming. Oh yes, there's there's Simon the Zealot. I wonder how he got on, and how did anybody get on in Nazareth? I wonder. And what about those that were heading down towards that little village near Tyre? Or, you know, and people would give the the apostles would give their report to the to the to their shepherd, their chief shepherd. So they would. Um, they would tell him about the wonders of grace that had been worked through them. And uh, you can just imagine our Lord listening very carefully and encouraging them and, and then say, well, you've really worked very, very hard, you 12. Come on, we'll, uh, we'll go on retreat for a day or two. And that's what the plan was, of course. And as we know, they went off to some lonely place, but the people knew where they were heading for. And they got there. And uh, we know what happened then. Our Lord set himself to teaching the mass of people because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He took pity on them. Um, think about the way I, I've been thinking about that and our, the group that meet on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock to look at the scriptures. We, we all found, we're very moved by this passage today, I think, that um, how important each of us is to the Lord's work. And the, the Lord wants to know, he wants us to, to share with him the, the ups and downs of our life as, as Catholic Christians. And sometimes there'll be more downs than ups. But he wants to hear. He sat down and they, they came to him and told him all that they had done and taught. And... I think it's important that we get a sense of the importance that the apostles had for our Lord and that uh, it to perhaps to a lesser extent, because we are not apostles in the same sense as they were, but the importance that we have. We are our Lord's emissaries. We are his ambassadors, as St. Paul says in um, 2 Corinthians. We are his ambassadors. And, you know, the ambassador has to give an account to the monarch. 
if not to the prime minister, um, and to be able to report on their activity. And our Lord, seeing how hard his apostles had worked, then thought, well, they really deserve a break now. They've worked very, very hard. And I just find it also wonderfully human. The, a good a good leader with his people, encouraging them, caring for them. And okay, things don't quite work out as 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 planned, even for, even for, for the Lord Jesus, they don't work out the way he had planned them, but still he can cope. And the apostles obviously are very busy with him, uh, looking after the crowds that came. So I take a very simple but encouraging message from that, that um, and perhaps to quote that wonderful prayer from St. John Henry Newman that, that, we've, that we um, have looked at many times in the parish here, that uh, I have, I, God has created me for some special purpose. I may not be sure exactly what that is, but I am, a, I am important to God's work. I am a link in a chain. And the Lord who calls us wants, wants us to share with him how we feel about what we're doing, how we understand what we're doing. That's how we can improve on what we're doing. I wonder whether we think of our prayer like that. I think it's... It's a good way to, to, to pray, to, to give an account, not, not in any judgmental sense or any frightened sense, just to say, well, Lord, this is, this is how it is. This went well. That was a disaster. I forgot this. Don't think I managed that very well. But with your grace, we can always go on growing and improving. So... That's my message for this weekend. God bless the week ahead. And as I say, thank you for your prayers for our chapter. Just to give you one or two notices for the week. Um, we have a funeral on, on Monday. Uh, now the funeral is at 11, but there will, there will be Mass at 10. I particularly wanted to celebrate Mass at 10 because that's when Irene, the mother of our provincial father, Martin Newell, that's when she's being buried um, over in um, somewhere near Ilford, on that side of the, of the, of the Thames. So there'll be Mass at 10 on Monday, and the funeral of Philip Foreman will follow at 11. And then the rest of the week goes as, as usual. Um, we're all wondering what's going to happen about the lifting of restrictions in, the, in this pandemic time. Having discussed the matter with, uh, with Deacon Barry, um, we will not make any change to what we're doing for the time being. We don't think that's necessary. So we keep the, the, the uh, um, antibacterial gel and so forth will be used at the beginning and at the end of each service that the surfaces will be cleaned and, uh, and people will I think it's best to say uh, we'll keep masks on. I know that there are real encumbrance and a real pain, but they are preventing the uh, the spread of the virus. So for the time being, there will be no change. And then just a, a brief word about the chapter. Uh, the result of it might sound very strange, which, which is that we voted by a, a very big majority, those of us who were present, 
we voted not to elect a provincial council. And by doing that, we were putting ourselves under the umbrella of our father general in Rome, Father Joachim, who was present at our chapter. Uh, this takes some of the burden of administration away from us. Um, and during the, this next 14 or 15 months, until the time we have uh, an international synod of the congregation, or possibly uh, until or possibly even until 2024, when we have our next general chapter, for the chapter for the whole worldwide congregation, we are looking at ways of working more closely uh, together with the uh, brothers passionists in Ireland and seeing where that will lead us. Uh, as a province, we are very small uh, and we need, um, we need to be part of something bigger, really. And that's what we're looking at. We can't predict how, how it will end up, but that's, that's the way we're going. The, the effect, the immediate effect of the chapter is that there is no change in any of our communities up and down the country. Not that we have many, but certainly in Herne Bay, things are the same and so on. So there we are. It was a good week. It was a tiring week, but it was a good week. And we felt, we felt God's presence in a very powerful way. And we, we trust that we've done what the good Lord asked us to do. Okay. Bye for now. <laughs>